Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. One week away now until WWE Battleground live on the WWE Network. NoDQ.com has got you covered with the latest news, rumors, and of course, live results coverage. I will be tweeting as well on Twitter, Twitter.com slash NoDQ, D-O-T-C-O-M. I'll be sure to be pissing some people off as I do for every WWE event, but hey... I just call it as I see it. Got your questions here, so let's get started with the first one today from Godzilla Star. Hey Aaron, Kane should be taken out by Brock Lesnar soon for the Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar match at Battleground. But can WWE use another storyline down the line? Say Kane comes back with his mask after being taken out right around Hell in a Cell to fight Brock. Your thoughts? I suppose you could do something where Kane comes back as a monster again and feuds with Brock Lesnar. I just don't know if Brock Lesnar versus Kane is a marketable main event at this point in time. WWE would really need to do a lot with Kane to make him credible once again, and certainly credible enough to have a match with Brock Lesnar. A lot of people have brought out the idea that Kane could come back and try to get revenge for The Undertaker. But if they were going to do that, it should have been done a long time ago. Why wait until now to try and get revenge? It wouldn't make any sense because he would have done it already if he was going to come back and try to get revenge. Uh, so for Kane to come back as part of the authority with the mask on uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And him as a heel against Brock Lesnar, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just feel that if you were going to do Kane versus Brock Lesnar... Kane should have gone back to having the mask a long time ago, and they should have capitalized off of the Undertaker streak ending. Because of the fact that that didn't happen, I don't really feel it's a good idea to invest in Kane like that again and use Brock Lesnar's limited schedule to have him feud with Kane. Just not a big fan of it. All right, this one comes from T. Fern Nora. Yo, Aaron, when do you think WWE will do a Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton match? In my opinion, it should happen at WrestleMania 32. Also, do you think WWE should consider doing The Rock and Randy Orton? I would love to see Randy Orton against either one of those guys for WrestleMania 32. I feel that Randy Orton hasn't really been used to his full value in WWE as of late. And looking at potential matches for WrestleMania 32... Most likely, it's not going to be Brock Lesnar versus Steve Austin, and you're going to want something huge for Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32. The next logical opponent, I think, is Randy Orton, because it's the one big match WWE hasn't done yet. Who else on the main roster can you have Brock Lesnar go against at WrestleMania 32? There's not a lot of choices. I think Randy Orton would be your best bet, and that's a match that people have been wanting to see for a long time. And if you have... The Rock involved with Triple H and they do that mixed tag team match or whatever. You know, those guys will be kept busy. You can have the Shield members in a match. It just, it would make sense. It would open up the door for Randy Orton to go in there against Brock Lesnar. But if WWE doesn't decide to do the match with Ronda Rousey and Stephanie and Rock and Triple H in that, that combination, uh, you could definitely bring in The Rock for a match with Randy Orton. Looking at potential matches for The Rock... Um, a match with Randy Orton would definitely be at the top of the list, in my opinion. I'd love to see either one of those matches. I, I would be cool with either one happening. I definitely feel WWE should do Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton, you know, rather than Brock Lesnar versus Kane, for, for instance. I think that Lesnar and Orton would be a very marketable match, and you could even turn Orton heel again. Uh, you know, you just want to give it some time, though, because Randy Orton just turned babyface not too long ago. And Lesnar should be a babyface now from this point. Uh, but definitely by WrestleMania 32, um, you could turn one of those guys and do that match for WrestleMania. That, that would be amazing. All right, this one comes from The Dark One One. Hey, Aaron, please answer in video. Do you ever see SmackDown as the number one show with or without the brand extension? Also, do you see it being live every week after all? Thanks and keep up the good work. Well, I don't think SmackDown can be the number one show without the number one announcer, Funaki. But in all seriousness, no, I do not see SmackDown ever being the number one show. Monday Night Raw is the flagship. It has been the top show by WWE for over two decades now. 
Raw is what it's all about. That is the must-watch show. That is what has been the flagship show and the must-see show every week is Monday Night Raw. WWE is never going to put another show ahead of Raw. Raw just has the history behind it. SmackDown is taped. Yeah, they could make SmackDown live, but Monday night is wrestling night. That is the way fans have been conditioned for decades now. So unless you want to put SmackDown on Monday nights, which is not going to happen, Raw is a very strong brand name for the, for the product. It is a, a television show that people watch and have been watching for years. Uh, so no, SmackDown is never going to be the number one show. It's never going to be the flagship. It's going to be Raw for as long as humanly possible. As long as WWE wants it to be number one, it will be number one. And uh, there's, there's really no reason because Raw has the history behind it. All right, this one comes from Ziggler is Money. Am I the one who doesn't want to see another WrestleMania main event with part-timers? Can't we just get two guys working every day of the year in the main event? I wouldn't mind seeing Austin again, but if Rock Triple H main events, I swear I will kill myself. Uh, well, you need to be careful about the threats you make because people are going to insist that you hold up to your end of the, the deal if you make those kind of threats. But um, regarding part-timers being in the main event at WrestleMania... WWE is in a business to make money, and they want to draw the biggest crowd possible for WrestleMania. They want the, the most amount of people watching, so they're going to bring back names from the past. They're going to do whatever it takes, anything, to get more people watching WrestleMania. And sometimes you have to look to the outside. Sometimes for WrestleMania, you have to bring in the extra talent or the extra celebrities, whatever. And instead of bringing in celebrities in recent years, what WWE has done is they've brought back names from the past. They brought back The Rock, and uh, they brought back Austin for non-wrestling appearances, and I could see them doing that again, and as long as they as they want to, because it, it does um, add to the WrestleMania name. It's not like these guys are coming back, and they're going to be around full-time taking jobs from other people. It's just about boosting WrestleMania and making it as big as possible. But yeah, I, I, do, I do feel, on the other hand, that WrestleMania should be a showcase for your your new stars and your future talent. They should be getting the rub off of the WrestleMania name. Use the stars from the past to draw in people to WrestleMania, and then at WrestleMania, the new guys shine, and they have their chance to make an impression on those new people tuning in, and you can possibly create some new fans or even bring back fans from the past and have them watch the product again. All right, this one comes from Anthony Matzell. Hey, Aaron, please answer in video. With Battleground coming up, can you see Sting interfering in the Reigns and Wyatt match? Helping Reigns and set up a Sting-Wyatt match at SummerSlam so Sting can get his win. Enjoy the videos. Well, I have a feeling that the Bray Wyatt fans that always ask me about when he's going to get a big push, they're not going to be happy with that question. They're not going to be happy with the idea of Sting coming in and beating Bray Wyatt at uh, SummerSlam, because then it goes back to that previous question, the part-timers coming in and taking the spots from the younger guys, um, you know, staying another example of somebody that they brought in for WrestleMania, and they only bring him in for the big events. Like I've said in previous videos, I would like to see Sting with a win at SummerSlam. I would like to see that before WrestleMania 32, so Sting goes into WrestleMania with a victory. Um, and you definitely want to put Sting in there with somebody big. You just don't want to have him come back and be in a throwaway match. So you want Sting to have a significant win. Who do you have Sting beat? Um, Bray Wyatt would be a guy on the list. I mean, that would certainly be an interesting match because Bray Wyatt's all about the mind games, and that's the same thing that Sting's been about for years. Uh, you know, in the rafters, doing the thing with the Crow gimmick and um, playing mind games with the NWO. That's what Sting was all about in the late 90s. So that would make a lot of sense to do that feud. And as much as some Bray Wyatt fans would not like it, um, you know, Sting would go over and beat Bray Wyatt and then go on to WrestleMania to face Undertaker. I would be fine with that, but maybe there's somebody else you could put in there instead of Bray Wyatt. But either way, somebody's got to lose to Sting. Uh, so whether it's Bray Wyatt or whether it's Seth Rollins or anybody else, 
uh, somebody's got to lose the Sting and get him over for WrestleMania 32. And uh, whether people like it or not, if, if Sting is going to be part of WrestleMania 32, he needs to be booked strong, as, as strong as possible, for sure. All right, this one comes from Dame Emad88. Hey, Aaron from England. I read an article about Vince not being happy with Dean and Seth after their ladder match because there was too many risks, but Triple H was cool with it. Do you think when Vince goes, we will get a change in the product? Keep up the good work. I have not heard those reports about Vince being unhappy with the ladder match. I assume you're talking about money in the bank. Uh, the thing is, what what risks are you talking about? That was actually one of the safer ladder matches in recent WWE history. Both of the matches, the Money in the Bank match and the WWE title match, for, for your typical ladder match standards, uh, both of those matches were really safe. Um, so I'm not sure what the deal is with, with uh, that report that you heard. But I, I doubt Vince was upset because those guys had a really good match and it was safe. And uh, you can't ask for anything more. Regarding uh, if we'll see a change in the product when Vince is gone, probably. But I think that they will stick to the women winning formula for the most part. You know, you're going to continue to do what works. And the way Vince has been doing it, whether people like it or not, has been successful. I, I can definitely see Triple H and Stephanie trying to stick to Vince's formula as much as possible. But I do think there'll be some change. I, I think Triple H will will definitely go in a more youth-oriented uh, direction and also perhaps more in a traditional pro-wrestling direction in regards to uh, having more in-ring performances and less of the soap operas and dramas. But... Who knows? Maybe maybe Triple H will want to keep it as close to Vince's vision as possible. All right, this one comes from That Was My Fault. Hey, Aaron, I know it's way too early, but do you predict a WrestleMania 32 main event? I don't like the idea that Rock and Hunter is the main event, but who gives a crap? If we want two old dinosaurs fighting each other, we can just watch Jurassic World. Uh, once again, going back to earlier... I, I don't think Triple H and The Rock would be a bad match if you did it as a mixed tag team match with Ronda Rousey being involved. Uh, but yeah, the idea of doing just The Rock versus Triple H again, um, from, a, from a nostalgic point of view, it would be an interesting match. But um, I'd rather see something different. If they're going to bring back The Rock for one more WrestleMania match, put him in there with Orton. Put him in there with somebody he hasn't fought at WrestleMania before. Um, I'd rather see that than Rock versus Triple H again. Um, you say you don't give a damn, but I know there are fans out there that would love to see that match again. And um, there are people that have stopped watching wrestling that would probably tune in again to see that match. And at the end of the day, that is the goal. Going back to earlier, WWE wants to get as many people watching WrestleMania as possible. And they're going to do whatever it takes. And whether you care or I care... What matters is the masses care. And if WWE can get the masses interested in WrestleMania by doing Rock vs. Triple H, that's what they're going to do. Last question here from Mr. Wrestling 85 Hey, Aaron, happy belated anniversary to you and your bride, and may you be blessed with many more. With WWE being high on top-tier NXT talent moving to the main roster, do you think Sheamus will become another star to unsuccessfully cash in as a result of it? That remains to be seen. I think that WWE is very high on Sheamus right now, and they will go all the way with him, and he'll be successful in cashing in money in the bank. But there's still a lot of time. Uh, it doesn't have to happen right away. And um, right now, there's no indication he's going to win the title anytime soon. And I think it's best to just wait it out and see if an opportunity comes along where Sheamus can win money in the bank. And it makes logical sense. It advances the storyline. It advances Sheamus. It elevates him. Um, there, there's just time. I, I think a lot of it will depend on the timing and if things work out for him to step in and cash it in. Who knows? Maybe Seth Rollins will get injured or somebody else will get injured and that will open the door for Sheamus to step in. Anything can happen. So it, it's, it's really hard to say if he'll be unsuccessful or not. But if more NXT guys come in soon and the roster gets bloated up, uh, that could very well decrease the chances of him cashing in money in the bank. So that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks as always for watching. Subscribe at youtube.com slash no DQ CAW. 
Tell a friend about an OD Q and a video. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the latest, and I will see you guys next time for another edition of an OD Q and a video.